Welcome to HESIA 2 exam practice test. Our topic today is practice test. Use the link in the description to download the app on the App Store for free practice tests. Number 1. In this example, you can doze in class again, however, if you do, I'll pinch you and wake you up. Which type of context clues is used to define doze? A example. B contrast. C substitution. D illustration. The correct answer is B. Contrast. Explanation. In addition to looking at the context of a passage, readers can use contrasts to define an unfamiliar word in context. In many sentences, the author will not describe the unfamiliar word directly, instead, he or she will describe the opposite of the unfamiliar word. Thus, you are provided with some information that will bring you closer to defining the word. Number 2. What should readers do to understand the author's message? A. Taking the author's position into account. B. Looking for author's qualifications. C. Skimming the text. D. Using all possible context clues. The correct answer is A. Taking the author's position into account. Explanation. In order to be an effective reader, one must pay attention to the author's position and purpose. Even those texts that seem objective and impartial, like textbooks, have a position and bias. Readers need to take these positions into account when considering the author's message. When an author uses emotional language or clearly favors one side of an argument, his or her position is clear. However, the author's position may be evident not only in what he or she writes, but also in what he or she doesn't write. Since you are in the middle of an exam and the only source of information is the text, you should look for language and argumentation that seems to indicate a particular stance on the subject. Number 3. Elton is a candle maker. Each 15 cm long candle he makes burns evenly for 6 hours. If Elton makes a 45 cm long candle, how long would it burn? A. 9 hours. B. 12 hours. C. 18 hours. D. 24 hours. The correct answer is C 18 hours. Explanation. Using proportional reasoning, since 45 cm is 3 times as long as 15 cm, the amount of time for a 45 cm candle to burn will be 3 times, 6 hours is multiplied by 3 equals 18 hours. Number 4. Two thirds of the students in Mr. Garcia's class are boys. If there are 27 students in the class, how many of them are girls? A. 7. B. 9. C12. D20. The correct answer is B. 9. Explanation. This problem requires you to understand how to approach word problems involving fractions and ratios. You are given the total number of students in the class and the fraction of students who are boys. With this information, you can determine the number of boys by multiplying two-thirds by 27 you will find that there are 18 boys in the class. You can then find the number of girls by subtracting the number of boys from the total number of students, and you get the answer of 9. There are 9 girls in the class. Number 5. Researchers often design medicines that can be swallowed, digested, and diffused into the bloodstream. What property do these medicines have? A. Hydrophobic. B. Nonpolar. C. Amphiphilic. D. Hydrophilic. The correct answer is dehydrophilic. Explanation. If water tends to adhere to another substance, the substance is said to be hydrophilic. Researchers often design medicines that can be swallowed, digested, and diffused into the bloodstream. These medicines all have hydrophilic. Because it can be dissolved into the bloodstream, it is hydrophilic. Molecules that need special proteins or transport vesicles to be carried in the blood are usually hydrophobic. The medicine is most likely a polar molecule because it can be dissolved by water easily. Number 6. What is the main component of the cell wall? A. Chloroplast. B. Amyloplasts. C. Cellulose. D. Leucoplasts. The correct answer is C. Cellulose. Explanation. 
Cell wall is made of cellulose and composed of numerous layers. The cell wall provides plants with a sturdy barrier that can hold fluid within the cell. The cell wall surrounds the cell membrane. Number 7. What is the term that describes the dissolving process? A. Saturation. B. Solvation. C. Solubility. Dehydration. The correct answer is B. Solvation. Explanation. A solution is a homogeneous mixture. A mixture is two or more different substances that are mixed together, but not combined chemically. Homogeneous mixtures are those that are uniform in their composition. Solutions consist of a solute, the substance that is dissolved, and a solvent, the substance that does the dissolving. The intermolecular attraction between the solvent and the solute is called solvation. Number 8. A solution is made by mixing 250 grams of hexane and 50 grams of octanol. What is the mass percent of the octanol? A. 16.7%. B. 20%. C. 50%. D. 83.3%. The correct answer is A. 16.7%. Explanation. Percent concentrations can be calculated by mass or by volume, by dividing the mass or volume of the solute, by the mass or volume of the solution. This quotient is a decimal that can be converted to a percent by multiplying by 100. In this case, the mass percent of octanol is calculated by dividing the mass of octanol, 50 grams, by the mass of the solution, 300 grams, and the result, after converting to a percent, is approximately 16.7%. Number 9. What are spaces between lamellae called? A. Trabeculae. B. Diaphyses. C. Lacunae. D. Epiphyses. The correct answer is C. Lacunae. Explanation. Two types of connective bone tissue include compact bone and spongy bone. Compact, or cortical, bone, which consists of tightly packed cells, is strong, dense, and rigid. Running vertically throughout compact bone are the haversion canals, which are surrounded by concentric circles of bone tissue called lamellae. The spaces between the lamellae are called the lacunae. Number 10. What can help individuals make decisions regarding matters of life? A. Scientific principles. B. Medical principles. C. Chemical principles. D. Ethical principles. The correct answer is D. Ethical principles. Explanation. Ethical principles should be understood and used by nurses. When applied correctly, ethical principles can facilitate decision-making in all facets of life. Nursing especially is a profession in which ethics play a large role. The patients trust that the nurses will always make decisions that are in the best interest of the patient. The study of science and medicine can equip an individual with the skills necessary to save or improve a person's life, however, ethics give the individual the ability to make decisions regarding matters of life and death. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe to our channel for updated videos every week.